intro, mate. We'll crack into it. All right, cool. All right, thanks for having me. Uh, cool. Uh, thank you. G'day, it's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here again with Crank, and tonight I'm having a chat with Silenos, guitarist for Dimil Bulgir and Insidious Disease, who are due to drop their second slab of death metal brutality after death, October 30th, through Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, cheers for joining me, mate. No worries, mate. Cool. 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 Um, first off, man, it's been 10 years since the um, first Insidious Disease album, Shadowcast. What inspired you all to get back in and record this new album? <clears throat> well, I think we um, we had it in the back of our minds that we were going to do a, a second album. Obviously, uh, we didn't anticipate it to take that long to get it out. But um, yeah, we've just basically been working on and off with songs since 2011, 2012, up until... 2017 when we recorded the album so uh, obviously we haven't uh, been too busy with it but uh, you know um, inspiration yeah. comes and go you know you gotta strike when the iron is hot so yeah yeah so so you recorded this in 2017 you son yeah it's wow been so on, it's been on the shelf for a while um, and we've been shopping around for uh, to find the the best suitable place to release it and uh, yep. you know once we found um, the home that was probably obvious for for us uh nuclear blast um, obviously things got delayed a couple of times and then we had this uh virus bullshit that delayed yeah. it even further so we were like okay well for us it doesn't matter if it takes another three or four months before it comes out because it's still going to be new to the listener so it's been a test in patience for sure but yeah it's it's going to be out now so Feels good. Yeah, yeah, it would feel good. It's kind of a long process because I knew you said had dropped that soul excavation on the um, death is just the beginning compilation with Cataclysm and Thy Artist Murder. Right. I think that yeah, come yeah, yeah. come out back in two thousand and eighteen, I believe, yeah. and that was kind of the first taste of the new album. Then, eh? Pretty much, yeah. And that's when uh, when we got things sorted with the label. And ever since then, it's been a little bit back and forth with delays and all that stuff. Obviously, Insidious is not. Uh, a main priority on such a big label which i totally understand and get so we had to like you know kind of uh adapt to that situation but uh that's fine you know i mean insidious um obviously has a huge priority for me and the other guys but um uh, everyone knows that we have our main bands yeah. in uh yeah. in dim and, and napalm death and stuff like that so yeah yeah, Shane's like in about a hundred bands, I think. I seen him a couple of years ago when he <laughs> came down here to Australia with um Napalm Death and Lock Up and Brugeria, and that was yeah. just great. And I watched him kind of back up in three bands one after another. It's like, geez, that man is a machine, eh? He is, he is, he, um, although he said that he's never gonna do that again. <laughs> Which is totally understandable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the end of it, he looked he looked like, dude, get me off here, I need a beer and just a chill. Loud, eh? <laughs> uh, so, so how did you approach the songwriting then for this album, Ben? That was a few years ago. Yeah, it's uh, it was with uh, just like uh, with the first album, uh, we had also a lot of um, leftover ideas, and for this album, I think we we uh, we had like 15, 16 songs, maybe. Uh, which that's that's where you start to. Um, you have to produce yourself, you know, and shave off the fat and and uh, and just, you know, get down to business because I I think that music like this or an album release like this shouldn't have more than 42, 43 minutes, really, because it's, yeah. it's extreme and you want the listener to listen again. Uh, the CD. It's, uh, yeah, you know, it's been a bit back and forth, obviously, but... Uh, um, and the downside to it obviously has been that we haven't had a deadline. So that can be a bit tricky sometimes, you know, because you're tempted to go back to songs that are pretty much finished and change it around. And that's when you can fall down the rabbit hole or just like, fuck, you, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like pulling a string from a ball yeah. of yarn, isn't it? You can just keep pulling at it, eh? It's right. come across so, uh, so really good. We finished with songs for this album, we, we felt like, okay, we, we'll just shelve it until we were actually going to record it and uh, try not to listen to it too much because that, you know, it's it's pretty trickery in that sense. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you recorded this one at your home studio as well. That would have been um, a pretty cool process, I suppose. Did you all kind of get in there for that when you recorded that? 
Yeah, we um we did the drums first uh, because that's how we always recorded stuff, uh, I guess. So, um, and th then we did the uh, yeah we did the drums in our uh, rehearsal space, which is uh, pretty big and uh, has a high ceiling and stuff like that. But um, uh, obviously we're not studio technicians, so for us it was a uh, was a bit of a new uh, gamble, and uh, Russell Russell, who uh, who mixed and mastered the album, he uh, he got some. Um, but really well in the end, and then we did uh, the guitars and bass at my uh, studio, home studio, and uh, some of the vocals as well. So um, yeah, it was uh, it's cool to to work in your own tempo and don't have to really. Yeah. Uh, do the eight to four thing in, in the regular studio. Yeah, it would have been a really fun process, I suppose, with um all your other bands as well. Then kind of doing this one would have kind of felt a little more um fun as well. Kind of going back to your home studio, all years in together after ten years, or we would have been just under yeah. ten years at that time, and kind of catching up again, and kind of like it would have been a bunch of old mates and a, a great old time getting in there and recording this one, eh? Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I think the, with Insidious, which is we, I mean, the way we uh, write songs and work together is, is pretty laid back, you know, but once we get down to business uh, recording stuff and rehearsing stuff, then then we take it really seriously, just like I do with Dimmer, you know, and uh, that's how you get the stuff done. So, um, yeah, I feel really um, happy with this release and uh, feel confident about it. So just can't wait for more people to hear it. Yeah, well, that's the that's the thing, and there's been so much great death metal. This album has kind of really topped it off for me this year. There's been some unreal death metal bands, and when I heard that you guys are releasing this album, I was like, dude, this is kind of the cream on the cake for me. It's been a great year for death metal, and that Betrayer film clip, I think that was the most recent film clip that was released from Yeast. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the the lyric video uh, we did, and then uh, we will soon have. Um a proper uh, video um, for the song Invisible War. Um, yep. So that should be uh, coming out just around the corner as well. And uh, we're pretty happy with how that turned out, you know, taking the situation this year into consideration. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it feels, a weird time, yeah. isn't it? Like, I've spoken to a few bands that like you that have been like, okay, and we got to do lyric videos or become a little more creative about how they're approaching the film clips because you all can't get in together and do like a full film clip, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that was, we were supposed to, we we're scheduled to do the, the, the real video clip in, um, uh, in May or June or whenever it was, but things obviously got delayed for that as well but we managed to do it now in september and uh yeah it's uh you, you gotta try and find uh ways of uh, going about things even if um, a situation is challenged and compromised yeah yeah that's it and um you guys have got to have some vinyl as well with this because i'm noticing um a lot of bands are bringing out vinyl and that's good for metalhead collectors like me that actually really love getting those sweet <laughs> vinyl collections yeah same here man. i actually went and bought uh, a record player a while ago yeah. to build that up nothing beats vinyl to me as well and uh i hardly have any cds the cds i still have is, is the stuff i own that play on myself and the rest is vinyl basically so uh uh, yeah, we have. Uh, I think so far the label has uh, a limited run of 1300 copies uh, for the vinyl. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully that's gonna go soon, you know. <laughs> and the good thing about vinyl is, you know, it, it has it, it creates a whole listening experience, and I feel a lot of people are uh, forgetting that that whole listening experience the way you listen to albums like after death and you play it from start to finish it it creates a full experience and i believe that people are forgetting what kind of experience that creates and i believe the platforms like spotify i'm guilty of listening to it but i'll go buy albums and listen to whole albums if i like a band i will buy the vinyl, buy the album and listen to the whole album there's nothing like it eh? No, absolutely and i think it's uh it's a good way to listen to vinyl it's a good way of actually recovering some of uh, our own attention span the way it is has turned out in 2020 you know it's like as you say it, it has a more of a ritual ceremonial feeling putting on a, a vinyl and pay attention to 
to it, you know, instead of being distracted with a lot of other stuff that's around you. So I totally agree with you with uh, anything wild. Yeah, there's nothing like getting lost in a good record, that's for sure. Um, Enforcers of the Plague, man, that was kind of a little bit of a, a heads up of what was to come, isn't it? <laughs> I guess you can say that, but uh, um, I had this question before, like, yes, someone asked me, did you write it because of the pandemic? And I was like, well, no, no, that was way before. For a while, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was way but, before. It was like a precursor, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you can say, you know, the, the, the song, I guess, deals with the uh, with how um, uh, politics are uh, are pulling the strings on 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 us all, you know, and uh, so and they continue to enforce the plague, which is like having people go up against each other because of different beliefs or whatever, you know. Uh, so it's it's highly, uh, um, you know, these times really calls for a song like that, I suppose. Yeah, and I suppose in times like this, though, people like you would be super creative because most of the musicians I've talked to, they're like, look, this is a hard time, but we're using it to create more and, you know, not kind of get caught up in the negative of things as well, which is kind of easy to do in the world at the moment. But we've got to kind of turn things into a little bit more positive. I've found more time to listen to more more albums, especially ones like this. Yeah, I think it's it's very important not to be caught up in, in negativity you know although it's it's very uh, strange at the moment but yep. uh, I feel it's it's very uh, healing to just uh, get into the creative mode and obviously <clears throat> being uh, an artist or you know of, of anything that's creative you you don't have like a button where you can turn on and off for inspiration it, you just have to strike while, while the iron is hot so to speak but I think uh, it's, after this it's going to come out a lot of uh, cool releases you know there's a lot of uh, um, desperation going on which will probably uh, be channeled pretty well into into new art so I'm, I'm looking forward to that yeah it's going to be a pretty interesting time when all this is over and you know be, i think there's going to be a flood of material because i've spoken to lots of bands and they're all like look we've created more material and we're going to kind of keep working towards that until we can kind of tour again because you keep you can't plan anything like it's no point in asking oh yeah when an insidious disease going to tour because you don't know at the moment you don't know when no, no one, tour. No, no you really don't know knows. anything no no so uh I think, but it's it's cool to um, to just be uh, prepared for when when that happens, you know, and that everybody is going to be uh, be on the go, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a great uh, universal release, so to speak, when when things are going back to normal. Yeah, and that, you know, it gives people time. You know, if you can't go to shows, you can still buy an album. Maybe instead of if you can't get to see Dim or Insidious, go buy the pre-order pack. Go buy some vinyl. Go buy some merch. Just because you can't see your favorite band doesn't mean you can't support them. That's true. That's true. And uh, I feel like still, still the metal community and the metal fans are are still very supportive of physical yep. releases, and that's what keeps us uh, all going. You know, I mean, ever since the beginning of uh, the when we started in Sidious, the the main thing wasn't to to cash in or anything because let's face it it's it's the type of music that doesn't really uh <laughs> make you rich, <laughs> i know i so. know <laughs> <laughs> this day we um we probably haven't earned one penny on it if you consider that we the money that we get uh for shows and stuff we've just put back into the band right away so it's but uh we we've, we've feel uh, really happy when we we get to play this extreme music together and uh, uh, and you know that's that's yeah. the main important thing yeah, and hardcore metalheads like me, and especially death metal fans, just love the music so much. It kind of goes beyond a dollar value, doesn't it? It's created oh, a yeah, it It's going to go on and on. Right, and I think uh, bands in general doesn't really matter what type of music it is, especially when it's come to rock and, um, and metal. The bands start because they want to jam and play together, not because they have this huge vision about becoming famous or rich or whatever. You know, that's if that happens when that you can. Act actually live off of your um your hobby so to speak that's the that's the big bonus you know so yeah and i gotta ask what guitars did you use for this album mate i used um uh my own if you can remember <laughs> yep. yeah the esp guitars uh, occultist and uh, also um a baritone wiper which i've used for for quite uh, some time now and uh the, the, the guitar set for this recording is pretty uh, pretty damn straight simple you know it's like yep. 
uh, it's the SM57 mic straight on the cone on the cab, and it's uh, uh, I used um, a Marshall JCM 800 with the tube screamer in front, and that's it. You know, it's you, you can't get more basic than that, and more old school than that either. Yeah, and it creates a great death metal sounding album, that's for sure. And the, the lyric style and delivery is just so good. That's the thing I like with uh, Insidious Disease as well. Thanks, man. Uh, I, I think we uh, we put some uh, extra attention to the lyrics because uh, yeah, obviously on, on the surface it, it might, might look for the regular fan to like, oh, it's just gore, it's just death metal, it's uh, just word, blah blah blah. But you know, if, if you if people pay attention and read between the lines, that they might be something that they can find that oh, make them question things, you know. And I think that's the that's the good thing about the lyrical content. Uh, especially on this album that it makes hopefully people uh consider and think twice about stuff yeah that's the thing i love bands like yours i used to do it to my mom and she'd be like man that's so brutal that's so heavy and i'd rip out the lyrics and i'm like have a look at that mom and she's like oh okay then that's not so bad when you read the lyrics (laughs) 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 Uh, so i know this is going to be like picking a favorite child and I know every artist dreads it. And I know with me, when I listen to an album, it changes weekly, but have you got a favorite at the moment off the album and which one and why? Um, yeah, as you say, it's quite uh, difficult to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to look at things objectively on, on, with your own stuff. But I think, uh, you know, uh, Solo Excavation is, is a cool song, uh, Divine Fire, which we have actually played live a few times uh, already, which is probably one of the older songs on the album. It has um, it has my son's uh, ultrasound heartbeat uh, in the beginning. I don't oh. know if you noticed that. Uh, it's like kind of offbeat from the tempo yeah. of the song, but and then it ends with uh, Mark's uh, the singer, his son's yep. um, heartbeat uh, at the end. Well, so, that's got to be the favorite. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, in that sense. But I, I, you know, the, the good thing about this album, I think personally, is that it's very varied and. Um, yep. Uh, like your song uh, and end date with the world is uh, is also has you know has some new um, new stuff influences on it. So we'll see how it goes for the next album again. But yeah, would, our main goal is to try and keep it varied, you know, and uh, have have the groove, have the fast stuff, the mid pace stuff, and and the juicy stuff. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Solanos, this has been an absolute pleasure, man. I love all your work, bro. That Eonian album, that did not leave my record player for ages once it got into the car, dude. It blasted. I love the Insidious to see stuff, man. So thank you very much for joining me all the way over here in Australia. Um, We're going to sign out, man, let you get along to the rest of the interviews you got. But before we do, did you have any last words, shout-outs, or thank yous you want to add in quickly? Yeah, I just uh, hope that um, we can... uh also take uh, insidious to uh, australia uh oh. sooner than later you know and uh hopefully we can be back with them as well uh, as soon as possible and uh yeah we miss uh, playing australia i uh, would love to see you down under mate i'd be front row se- center silenos thank you very much mate you have a lovely evening you too man thanks a lot man Cheers. thank you mate all right